Ah, oh, we've got a holder today. Yeah, <laughs> I thought if I had to make a run for it, yeah. this is gonna be a little bit easier. <sighs> Booty hole. Did you do much yesterday then? Did I fuck? By the time I get in, I just can't be fucked. Honestly, by the time I get back home, I just can't be fucked to do anything. People are like, oh, why don't you go into London at night? And it's like, <laughs> you just can't no. be fucked. <laughs> this ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Now, um, one of uh, one of the we're actually we've just got to our first job now, as you've just seen. Uh, one of our subscribers has very keenly pointed out that I was using. I'll show you. I was using non-genuine uh, Milwaukee batteries. Now these are five amp power, um, just aftermarket batteries, so they're nothing particularly special. But I bought two of them for I think it was sixty quid for a pair of them, uh, and they're supposed to be five amp power. Now I do have a pair of brand new five amp power genuine batteries as well. So what I'm going to do, um, we're going to test them to see what the difference is. So this work light here runs off the M18 batteries, these ones here. So what I'll do, this one has literally just come off the charger, okay? So what we're going to do, I'm going to plug this in, we're going to run this at full power. Now this light should last, the book says it will last 90 minutes using a 5 amp hour battery. So as soon as I turn it on, we're going to time it. We're going to we'll try this battery and then we'll try the aftermarket one. And we'll just see what the difference is. Because I'm curious to know, the capacity does seem to be the same, just using it in power tools and stuff. So this is the only sort of accurate way, really, that I can measure it on the job, using a fixed, using a fixed you know, appliance like this, use the work light. So we'll plug it in, and uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted. One thing I should probably mention to the to sort of newcomers coming into this is that if you've... Um, if you've uh, put your down lights in, you're doing a rewire or something, and you put your down lights in, um, it's worth remembering that if, when you've, when you've put your wires in, just neatly coil them up, measure where they are, but also make sure to find out if any of these walls are changing, if there's a stud wall being put in, or if it's being dot and dabbed, and try to take into account anything else which could be changing. Because I've done that, I've made that mistake, where I've done a... I've done a job and I've come back, you know, two weeks later to do a second fix or something, and then suddenly the wall, you know, that was there has disappeared or something like that, and you're like, ah, damn, <laughs> you know. I mean, I still, I'll be honest, I still worry a little bit now, you know, when you come back to a job and you've got to cut, you know, you've got to cut your down lights in and stuff. I still worry a little bit when you're cutting the hole and it's like, you know, you just think, shit, I, I hope this is the right, <laughs> I hope this is the right spot. Uh, and I don't think there's an electrician who doesn't suffer from that. I mean, I certainly do, you know, when you're cutting them in. Uh, this job actually has been all right. You put your hand in and the, the wires were right there. The plaster is, you know, when the board has come to board the ceiling, they were quite, um, you know, they were quite nice. They just kept the cables there. But sometimes I've had it where board has come in and, the, you know, your bundle of cables, oh, they, just, they just throw them over there. And of course, once the boards are up, it's not that easy. You've got to use your rods to try and fish the wires back and stuff. It's... Uh, but here they were quite respectful. They just, they just left them right above the holes where they were supposed to be. So, uh, but yeah, I still worry about it. Still, you know, you still worry that your wires aren't going to be there when you cut the hole. Okay, so the genuine battery has just literally this minute run out of power, and that lasted just under two hours ten minutes. So the actual lifespan of the battery, well, it says it's supposed to last ninety minutes. So it's actually done about forty minutes longer than it was supposed to. Um, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure this aftermarket battery is going to... It actually feels a similar weight, but I mean, we know from a previous video that means jack. It doesn't mean anything. Um, but we'll, we'll plug this one in and we'll, we'll see how long it lasts. But we've got to try and beat two hours, seven minutes if we can. But I don't think it will. So we're just going, we're just going through now, just fitting these... Uh, we're both just fitting these smoke alarms in now. Um, and we're using these ones called BR, they're BRK. I don't normally use them. I normally use ACO because I, they're just, when you find a brand that you like, you just kind of keep using it. Um, but they didn't have any on the shelf this morning, so I had to get these BRK ones. I mean, it's a similar sort of, it's a similar, I mean, they're, they're all, I think when you get into safety products, they're all much and much as the safety of, you know, the, the actual build quality of them. And yeah, they're all very good, I think. Um, and this is no, I mean, it seems well made. They seem like a good bit of kit. BRK mm -hmm. is the brand of them. Uh, but anyway, what I wanted to show you was actually up on the on the ceiling. So when we're wiring the when we're wiring the uh, smoke alarms in, I'll just use a three core cable like well three core and earth cable like this, 
Um, and I'm, I'm using these uh, maintenance-free boxes, um, and these are from a company called D-Box. These, uh, these little push connectors are fantastic. Um, once, you've, once you've tried them, honestly, you, just, you wouldn't go back to terminal blocks. They're re they are really are fantastic. Uh, my, only actual, my only beef with these D-Box uh, boxes is that uh, you've got four terminals on either side, and it would, so it would assume that it would be, you know, it'd be a natural assumption that you have two twins going in that side, two going in that side, because you can fit up to, up to two twins on both sides. But the clamps are quite tight. You've really got to, you've got to sort of wiggle them in place to get that clamp on just right, uh, which I think is a little bit of a design flaw. It'd be nice if they could sort that and put a slightly wider or a, a taller clamp in. We just use grey as neutral, which I've just put a bit of blue sleeving on. And then that's the connector which comes from the, which then bolts into the back of the alarm. I just put a bit of brown sleeving over the trigger wire. Uh, and that's it, a bit of brown sleeving over the black conductor because that's, us, that's the, essentially the trigger wire to go out to the other smoke detectors. But yeah, I just thought I'd have a quick chat about these boxes, because the actual connector is exceptional, they're really, really good. But the clamping system, I'm not quite so keen on, but, and then once you fold it over, it's just a little pin here, which just pushes in, and it just holds it all together. supposed to do it because again if you look at the manufacturer's instructions there it will say use you shouldn't you should only use in that board in fact if you take the instructions wherever they are here look at the instructions for this board it will there will be a note in there saying you shouldn't mix you have to use individual you know British general fuses you shouldn't mix breakers no you are right it? you are right so right here it says all components used in a BG electrical consumer unit must be supplied by BG electrical the use of any other components will negate compliance to BSEN 61439-3 and the BG electrical guarantee. Failure to fit the consumer unit in accordance with these instructions will invalidate the guarantee. There you go. Yeah. You were right. Right, we've just this minute taken this battery off the Milwaukee work light. And this was the aftermarket one, remember? And that one did a minute 45. So, uh, the other one. You might want to retake really that, Tom. Why? You said a minute 45. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I will put that in the gag reel at the end of the year. <laughs> and now, uh, fuck. 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 <laughs> All right, so we've just taken this, uh, this aftermarket battery off the Milwaukee work line. Now, this battery did it in one hour 45. So, the original one did, what was it, two hours? 
seven minutes, wasn't it? Two hours, seven minutes, the first seven one. Minutes. So this one lasts, what's that, about 20 minutes less runtime. It was actually only supposed to last 90 minutes in that, in that battery, but, um, in, sorry, in the work light. But this one's actually, it ran for the you know, one hour 45, so it's done pretty well. Um, but that, I mean, it's not a very thorough test because just because you can go and buy, you know, there's, there's so many different aftermarket manufacturers, you know, of batteries. Just because this was a, a good one, it doesn't mean that you can go and buy another one because that one might have a crap run time. So it's, it's still very hit and miss. But I mean, it does prove there are some manufacturers of aftermarket batteries that are actually pretty good. This, you know, uh, and I paid 50, I think it was 55 quid for two. Uh, well, I mean, a genuine five amp hour batteries, I don't know, 80 quid, somewhere around there, I think. So you do get, I mean, it is value for money, but I mean, it does, I mean, it does have downsides. I mean, it does feel, you know, it does feel a bit cheaper. It's, it's not, you know, but you get what you pay for, I guess. But it's certainly not bad. It's worth considering. Cause, I mean, they are expensive. But yeah, it does go to show that there are, you can get good, good buys out there if you look around. Ah, fuck. I've got to take it all apart now because I didn't fit the... <sighs> How many times have we all been there and done that? Give us a like. You worried about it dropping? Sorry, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't think I could cope with that. Don't worry, I wouldn't drop it. I had my fingers in the handles. All right, let's get the rest of the shit and get back to work. All right, everybody, that's all we've got time for. We're done here. So one house rewire, finitoed. So if you want to subscribe to this channel, you're gonna be clicking up here. If you wanna watch another video, you wanna click about here. And patrons down here. And comments below. All right, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will see you maybe on a midweek video, but if not, it'll be next Monday. Take care, everybody. See, see you later. Guys.